Okay, so tonight I'm uh, pretty obviously going to be recording with this deck. Um, I looked into making changes. Uh, there was nothing I really thought that I really wanted to do. Uh, the deck was just all around solid, and all the cards are very good, and they have a very consistent theme of getting value, killing everything, or making mana. Um, the sideboard's really tight and does a lot of work. Uh, I guess I did consider moving a Liliana and a Doom Blast to the main, uh, and just moving some other cards around and trying out how the deck works with that, but didn't really feel like that was necessary. Um, I also considered cutting the Unravel the Aether, uh, so that when I uploaded the text file deck list to Magic Online, I did not have to manually search through my collection to add something with the AE symbol. So, uh, fortunately that was significantly easier than I thought. So I have this instead of an erase, which is about a push. I think the first copy is, is better as the artifact kill spell because it kills Perilous Vault. Um, whereas the second copy is better as erase as the cheaper enchantment removal spell. So I don't think you ever want to bring in two unravels against uh, Perilous Vault decks. Because uh, that's just too many answers to answers, even if they're very powerful. But overall, you can kind of see how the deck's laid out here. We've got... All of our awesome threats, all 17 of them, and they're all value threats. All things that come into play and add counters or draw cards, make dudes, make dudes, drain them, or potentially draw a land. Uh, our mana guys to go with our 24 lands, 9 of which are tapped lands, 15 of which are untapped. Um, you will notice all the tapped lands make black mana. Uh, and let's see, only 5, 6? I guess there's like a reasonable number of untapped lands that make black mana too, but... Uh, this is mostly just to balance out Windswept Heath uh, and the fact that that card is fixing our mana in that direction. So we need to lean on the other land types, so tap lands and pain lands to fix in the other direction. Um, also helps some early Thoughtseize sequencing. You know, like tap land on one and tap land on two Thoughtseize is great. Uh, more obs on charms than heroes downfalls because drawing two cards is sweet. Uh, drawing two cards is much better than doing nothing like Downfall does sometimes. And the sideboard, we've just basically got spot removal, sweepers, threats, and realistically another spot removal spell. Uh, Nisa to beat the Perilous Vault control decks again. Uh, and as a way to up your clock a little bit, it does kill them faster than a Johnny because it makes four haste power per turn instead of three. And it kills definitely way faster than Elspeth too. So there's a few matches where that comes up. Liliana is just generally awesome and a way to board in additional copies of all the cards you could ever want. Uh, cut as a cheaper removal spell in matchups where uh, typically you board it in where you're like going to a mid game, but like getting the extra hit from like playing like spell cut in a turn is really huge. So that's why this specific removal spell is here instead of more downfalls. Uh, it's really just tempo oriented. Uh, Bio Blights as your early answers, and Drown and Sars as the backup early answers, and then Sweepers. Uh, probably These Sweepers probably come in a lot more than I think most people think. Uh, it's really sweet in a lot of mirrors to have a way to just break parity, uh, or like play into your own cards to break parity, especially because you generally have more Planeswalkers than most other lists, and really want ways to rectify against Wingmate Rock. But yeah, uh, you'll get to watch me play with this deck, maybe pick up, I guess... I don't know how differently I play the deck from other people, but uh, it definitely has a lot of the same aspects as like fairies or Jund has in the past where you just like have to know when to turn the corner and get them. So hopefully some of those trends can be picked up on.